Alright, time for another DraftPhysics.com. DebatePhysics.com also. But as has been stated repeatedly, the form of the debate is absolutely useless. So, um, <laughs> you know, there is really is no debate. Uh, but the argument is the argument. And uh, as stated, I guess it's going to require uh, to be more explicit in terms of uh, I don't know, creating a paper and then watching the system run away from the facts and in some way uh, fake. You know, I, I they'll hide it, right? I mean, it's all they can do, and it's just going to require. You know, the, the the real truth is is if none of you watching these videos, the few people who do uh, get led here for some reason or other, if you do nothing, nothing will ever happen. Okay. Until, you know, I'll be dead and then it'll just be a record that I said all this crap and none of you morons did anything. You didn't force the issue. You didn't force them to actually answer the direct accusations and in some way. Now, the truth is this happened 300 years ago, okay? I mean, the fact is Leibniz's arguments were resoundly defeated and and, <laughs> and you know, somehow it was resurrected by, uh, you know, in the 1700s when everybody got stylish and rich. And um, I don't know, you know, and, you know, it became fashionable to believe in crystal gods. So they built a new religion around this garbage, okay, just as quantum has become a new religion, entanglement, because it gives all the the spiritualist types some sort of excuse to feel energized that yes maybe the universe is conforming to their silly beliefs but anyway all right so this will be the first argument and sorry it's going to get a little delayed by this little bit i'm going to say and then we'll just get to the argument so it's going to be the lever argument the lever is a decisive proof that one half mv squared can't be true the lever proves it wrong Okay, the balance, and it's a decisive proof. And there has been no response from anyone indicating otherwise. Okay, so Piero says, um, this, I don't know, this was just a, a nonsense, so I might as well really get, get it out of here. Experiments in space take five minutes and cost five dollars. Seriously? Uh, that's not exactly what I said, but the point is, is it's a huge advantage. 400 times better resolution, and you don't need an eclipse. Two gigantic advantages. You don't have to worry about what time of the day it is and any of that crap. Um, gigantic advantages, yes. I mean, it literally does take five minutes of satellite time. So, uh, five minutes of astronaut time. That's all it takes. It's just an absolute fact. And this is the best he does as a counter-argument. They haven't done it because... Somehow it's just way too onerous, okay? So they're spending billions of dollars looking for neutrinos and doing other kinds of nonsense, okay? But repeating one of the most uh, critical experiments in the history of physics, nah, not so important. I mean, just absolute nonsense, what, what gibberish. I mean, it just shows how these are religious nuts. They're Catholics. There's no point in talking to them. They can't be honest for a second. They can't honestly evaluate the facts ever. And an honest evaluation of the facts is, is that, yeah, I mean, it's a really important experiment. It's a really important fact that light is bent twice as much. And you really should have evidence of it. You really should prove it. And if it takes five minutes of satellite time to prove it, you really should do it. Oh, you're just such scummy liars. Anyway, also, you say you want to debate, but when I disagree and debate you, so you debate nothing, you encounter none of my arguments ever, okay? You just keep raising irrelevancies, like whether or not uh, 9.8 meters can be understood as a velocity, or whether you have to actually say the silly per second, and you have to actually say the per one second. Yes, it's not per seconds, it's per one second, oh, okay? You say I am belligerently dishonest. Yes, exactly. You just you haven't you haven't debated anything. You haven't touched any of the arguments. You haven't come anywhere close to making a reasoned argument disputing anything. 
you're a faker and a phony. The only time you ever pr produced any kind of link to evidence was this this awful wave experiment where they jiggled the waves as you know put as much noise as possible into the experiment to create disorder coming out, and then you called that <laughs> an interference pattern when clearly all it was was noise. Uh, you just can't believe someone disagrees with you. Okay, well, I, you know, it's, it's almost too stupid to read anymore, right? I mean, that's just too stupid. Okay, I, I, I find it incredulous, impossible to believe that you honestly can't understand how you've decidedly not provided a single counter argument to a thing I've said and that I have every good reason to believe what I believe because you have countered it with no evidence and no arguments. Your arguments are insane. I can't run across thin ice. I can't slide across ice quickly and avoid falling in. <laughs> That's your theory. I must fall in. Uh, I mean, it's an idiotic theory, okay? And that's all you have. And then this idiot says something like, look, I get it. Everyone's entitled to their opinions. And you don't get anything. Um, <laughs> you're the one throwing the mud, jackass. Uh, but when you start throwing shade, whatever that is, at mainstream physics and denying the existence of kinetic energy, I was saying, why wouldn't I deny the existence of it? Where? Can, you can't show me a single experiment decisively showing any of it, okay, ever. Not a single case, not a single example decisive. Not a single one. And you're sitting there saying, I can't, I, how dare I? How dare I doubt the experiment you can't show me? Oh, amazing. Uh, it's just amazing that they're this dishonest. All right, so let's get on to the subject. Oh, I just, oh, it's so disgusting to have to live on a planet of people so dishonest. All right, so this argument was made 300 years ago, and it's a, <laughs> against Leibniz. All right, and Leibniz had no response. So I make a balance. That is, I'm... I'm suspending a lever above, okay, the lever, all right? So, uh, just to make it understood that now the lever will move, okay, whenever I have an imbalance in the weights. If I put the fulcrum in the center of the lever, then I can balance two weights at any position. But if I do it from the top, I, it has to balance straight across, and I'll explain why. Um, and the simple truth is the lever decisively says, so I don't know if they're really going to be crazy enough to say this isn't true. A one mass will move four velocity on this side, and a four mass, okay, will move one velocity on this side and perfectly balance. So no matter what I do to it, I poke it, I do anything I want, it'll always come back to balance between those two things. All right, now their claim is, is that a four mass... Okay, uh, going one velocity equals a f two mass, I mean a, a one mass going two velocity. Okay, obviously it doesn't work. Okay, so this they say is the truth. Their theory says I must believe this. And the lever clearly says this. All right, so it's a competition between two experiments. One where you're dropping something in gravity, it goes four times the distance, and you're claiming that because it went four times the distance, it must, it must collect four units of gravity, four units of force. Now, even though Galileo told you it's only two units of time, and even though Newton's telling you it's only 9.8 meters per one second, it's in units of time. The force comes in units of time. <laughs> Uh, and clearly, you only have twice the velocity. It's just a, a fact. All right. So, um, so, so the point is, is, is the lever reliable? So how are they going to tell me the lever isn't a balance? It doesn't work. I'm, and I'm going to argue it's impossible for them to make that argument. Any motion here creates motion here in the opposite direction. So in gravity, it's quite obvious that the two forces are in action that you are in fact moving this one velocity all the time compared to the velocity of the other object. This one has to always move four times as fast as this object, no matter what direction they're moving, no matter how they're moving, this one's always four times. All right. 
And so there's that balance. And the only thing that's really moving on the lever, the thing you can understand, <laughs> okay, is, is when it's oscillating. The only thing that's moving on the lever, the only thing that's changing, okay, that equality. So there's a direct equality between these two things. Like let's say I had it oscillating and I had a little stick and stopped it from oscillating and the weights could fly off. The one mass would fly off at four velocity and the four mass would fly off at one velocity. So it's an absolute fact that the once I take the energy out of the lever that these objects would in fact fly in these directions. Okay. So what's really happening with the lever when you suspend it is that all you're really doing is changing this. You're changing how much mass is on one side versus the other side. So as you tilt the lever in a direction, that straight line obviously is different than the original straight line. And so this much mass has been placed, okay, has been changed in its position. It was on this side of the lever, it's now on this side of the lever. All right, so the part that's up is now heavier by this mass. This mass is making the only difference in the lever. It's now changed the mass of the lever. And then when it oscillates the other way, the mass switches to this side. Okay, and so now this side has the extra mass. And that's the only mass that's moving, is that oscillation. That mass gaining acceleration, swinging past the normal, Going back, you know, just keeps oscillating that energy. That's the only energy in the lever, is this mass switching sides back and forth. All right. And um, the, only, the only uneven energy. Obviously, the two objects have their kinetic energy, but the only part that's causing the thing to keep oscillating is that fact. All right, and it's a decisive proof. That's how levers work. That's how a balance works. It's a reliable device tested over thousands of years. It proves equalities. It proves what equals what. And they're claiming that answer is wrong. Okay, when the lever says it's one mass going, <laughs> okay, four velocity equals a four mass going one velocity, dead equal energy, dead equal momentum, dead equal power, dead, dead equal. Because there's no way you could have an oscillator where the oscillator loses the energy, then gets the energy back, then loses the energy. No, it's not going to happen. It can't switch it from side to side if it has to keep changing how much energy it is. If the energy can't disappear when this side's falling in gravity, and then reappear when the other side is falling. I mean, it's just too ridiculous. So look, the argument's about that simple. I mean, I guess I should be able to write something indicating that as a proof. And so it should come with these simple questions. You know, so if you want to debate me, you have to answer the question. How is the lever not decisive proof that 1 half mv squared can't be right? And how is it not decisive proof that gravity, okay, is just four times the distance is only twice the velocity and it's only twice the time and it's only twice the energy, all right, not four times the energy. Um, how is it not a decisive proof? What is it missing? How do, how do, you, how do you demonstrate its fallibility? How is the lever deceiving me when it says one mass, four velocity equals four mass, one velocity? How is it being deceptive? And we're talking about it in motion. And the motion, again, understand the rotational energy is exactly the same as actual momentum. The angular momentum is the same as any other kind of momentum. Um, and there's just all it is is a mass moving a velocity and there's no evidence that when one side's moving there's twice as much energy on that side as there is on the other side because it wouldn't balance then so so what's your counter argument to this argument 
That's what I want to hear. I made 25 arguments in the damn video you're replying to, and you didn't dispute a single thing. You didn't debate any of the accusations I made in that video. I mean, except to say something ludicrous like uh, doing experiments from space is uh, too onerous and too impossible. We can't afford the five minutes. It's five minutes. Um, anyway, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it's 400 times better resolution. 400 times better experiment. 400 times. Can you just imagine seeing better? 400 times better vision? I mean, it's a huge advantage. Gigantic advantage. All right. Um, so, yeah, maybe I'll leave it there. And uh, such. I guess I'll, maybe I'll pause just in case I can think of a better way to phrase the question. All right, just explain how the lever experiment is a lie. It's not telling the truth. Because I don't think mechanically you can get around the fact that it's mechanically got twice as much energy on one side by your theory as it has on the other side. It's just a mechanical fact. So how can it oscillate if it has twice as much energy on one side than the other? All right, so let's understand. Uh, the context is they have no experimental evidence demonstrating four pounds dropped one foot is the same energy okay, as one pound dropped four feet. That is twice the velocity. They have no experimental evidence showing that to be true. And I'm showing you, I'm giving you this piece of experimental evidence. I mean, I did it already, so it's all right. But I mean, you can all understand this isn't a lie. It's the law of the lever. Okay, it's been around thousands of years. You don't need to see my demonstration of it. You've seen demonstrations of it over and over and over again. So they have no experimental evidence against this experimental evidence. And yet they're going to call me unreasonable. That sounds unreasonable, right? <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a f religious fanatic. Physics is just a religion. It's a sad, sad truth. The world really has gone to absolute shit, and it's the intellectuals who sank the ship because they have no integrity. I mean, you don't have to be very smart to understand. If you don't have evidence, you don't have an argument. <sighs> Amazing.